Good morning, traders. It is Wednesday, November 13th. Taking a look at the charts, we've got the SP500 daily chart. And yesterday, we saw the equities market push higher and then reverse back down and close relatively flat on the session. Now, today, we're seeing the equities market start to sell off a little bit. All the indexes are down uh, three tenths of a percent to about six tenths of a percent. So showing a little bit of weakness. The volatility index is having a little bit of a pop today, up five percent. It continues to bounce along these bottoms. If we zoom out here, you can see that the last time we got down to this 12 mark, uh, we've seen very strong sell-offs in the equities market, which triggers a big spike in fear. And typically, that's what we're looking for. When volatility is low, it uh, won't go much lower. Uh, really, but in the grand scheme of things, it should eventually spike and go higher. It is a little tougher to trade with ETFs simply because the volatility index futures continue to lose value near the end of the contracts and the way Contango works and the ETFs that follow the futures uh, have to continuously roll forward, losing value. For example, if we look at the TVIX ETF, you can see how it naturally always makes lower lows and eventually has to keep doing reverse stock splits to keep the price going higher. And in fact, if we take a look over at the uh, the VIX here, take a look at this VIX chart on Finviz. If you take a look at the VIX, you can see here this is the Finviz uh, contract, and you can see how near the middle of each month, when the options expire, we we tend to see some very strong sell-offs. In, in the contracts, uh, pretty much in the middle of most months. And you can see here, we are just getting to the middle of the month, and this is gonna be this continuous uh, contract. It's the 20th, I think, is the when the futures contract expires. We still have uh, a few more trading sessions where the VIX uh, could lose quite a bit of value here. And after that, we tend to see the VIX uh, typically pop in price, at least to some extent. Um, we've seen it happen over and over again. So overall, the key with a really good VIX trade, which is very tough to do, is more or less to uh, have the options or the futures more or less mid-month type of thing where they're really losing a lot of value. And for the equities market, the stock market, to put in a top around that same time. So that keeps the uh, the VIX and the uh, ETF trading very low. And then as it rotates, uh, to the new contract and the, the stock market falls, we can get some very strong moves going forward with the ETFs. And the market feels like it's setting up for that. We've got a few more days with the VIX uh, contract expiring. I think we've got a, a couple more days of the equities trying to put in a top, and we could see a pretty big spike in volatility if that comes to play. Uh, let's take a look over at bonds today. Money is flowing into the safe havens. Bonds having a really nice relief pop. Obviously oversold. Put in a little bit of a base here. Look like a bear flag, but it is uh, correcting to the upside. This looks like, at this point, just an exhaustion kind of short covering kind of bounce in price. We're seeing that happen in uh, metals as well. Gold up 7 tenths of a percent, having a little bit of a rebound. Uh, silver's up 1.2%. So money is flowing into the safe havens today, but really the markets are oversold, and this will be the first little short covering, short squeeze to the upside. We'll see if it can get some traction. But overall, I do feel as though the equities market is topping still, and uh, the safe havens are trying to find a bottom. Obviously, last week we had some pretty strong news and some big moves to the downside flushing out for gold silver and uh, the miners actually if we take a look at the miners they actually did hold these lows over here and they had a nice strong pop yesterday today they're set to gap a little bit higher overall the miners typically lead the way and usually when you see gold miners start to break out you can get into gold and it follows suit afterwards and uh, you can catch the full move versus jumping on something that's already broken out but uh, that didn't quite happen last week, and we're letting the markets do their thing now. We've got to watch for the, the metals and the miners to continue to start to show momentum to the upside, for the equities market to start to show signs that is rolling over, and we'll be looking for some new setups. Looking over at energies, natural gas down another 1% today. Caught this beautiful pop and move all the way up, pulling some off up around the 38%, and uh, we ended up getting, closing the rest out this week. And now it continues to slide down, and this could continue to fade for some time. We've got a bow tie, a bunch of moving averages down in this area. Wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, natural gas come down to 250. 250 is more or less a whole number. It's a lot of moving averages in this area as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if it finds support down in this zone. 
looking over at crude down a third of a percent continues to struggle with this blue resistance area on the chart it's kind of rolling over uh, overall it's got the uh, the 20 day and the 50 day moving average kind of up uh, beneath it it's got the five day and the 200 day above it so it's getting pinched and squeezed here i have a feeling there's going to be a big move here in in uh, the energy sector uh, the question is just which way is it going to break it still has a, a feeling that it'll be to the downside but at this point the trend is is up so I think the better setup here will be if it starts to break support trend line here or puts in a rally with a big reversal candle back to the downside, it could be a good inverse ETF play for crude to come back down. Tesla's 52.51. If it breaks that level, we're going down into the, uh, the, the mid 40s and potentially even lower. Two other quick sectors to look at here. This is the Russell 2000. Overall, feels as though it might be putting in a top as well. We've got a couple of reversal candles here where price ran up and then got sold down really hard. Happened again a couple days later. And uh, two days ago, we saw price do the same thing, pushed up, got sold down. And today, we're starting to see futures start to sell off. So we'll see if we start to see the market crack to the downside and it starts to form a bearish formation. Small caps, the Russell 2000 typically leads the way uh, along with the transportation index. Here's the IYT ETF. I pointed this out in a video a couple of days ago that we had this, uh, we had two of these kind of reversal type of candles where price runs up and then gets sold into. Same thing here, ran up. Usually it's a short term pullback sign. Now we'll see if the market starts to break down and form some type of bearish formation going forward. Again, we saw a standout reversal candle here near the top, and uh, we've saw some reversal candles over here before a sell-off. We saw a reversal candle down here where it found a bottom, rallied back up. And uh, so these are pretty significant uh, candles, and we're just letting the market do its thing. I do feel as though we're going to see the, uh, the small caps and transportation index start to roll over. They could lead the way and uh, the SP 500 could follow. Anyways, that's it for this morning. I'll talk to you in a little bit.